What does it feel like to be working on dub no bass? Uh, strange, strange, you know, 20 year old thing, all sorts of memories, some hazy, some quite clear. Trying to do again something that's impossible. It's taken me quite a while to realize that I can't recreate that moment, that I have to aim for it and then embrace what it is now. And that's a strange thing, because then it's not the past anymore. And it feels incredibly contemporary, actually. It feels really now very strange. I've been getting right into sort of pulling parts out to recreate what was essentially a live thing done with very primitive equipment in my spare bedroom. This record, um, I, I listened to it a lot a couple of years ago um, and uh, just was just struck me how much I like the sound of it. I like the way Rick's made us sound. It's, it's very difficult to not start mythologizing about what we did. If we were to look back and say, well, you must have, you must have known you were heading to make that kind of record and things were going to turn around. No, it really didn't. It was, w w how's the money going to come in next week or the month after and while well, we're still having, trying to have fun. It, see, it's very easy to, to, to make a very simplistic myth about dub no bass. I know that when I put it on, I like the record. It's, it's a record that I could, I put alongside some of my other favourite records by other artists and when they come on, I got a, I like how I feel. And the fact that we made it, that's, that's pretty great, isn't it? Really specifically, I could those, the Essex people, the being married to a beautiful Essex girl, the A13, the proximity to London for a, for a Welsh boy who'd always just wanted to get away from village and town and you know, to be so close to London, to be able to access that. There was huge architectural change and social change going on around East London. I spent, you know, it, legend would say I would be doing it every week, but it wasn't like that. But I would drive down the A13 either to the Milk Bar or, and, and go early and stop off in Canary Wharf, which was being built. I remember getting on the Dock Line, Lachlan's Light Railway, just kind of weird experience, I had this daft ideas that were to do with, they were a hangover from student days and listening to Kraftwerk, you know, Computer World on headphones and just a love of architecture and place and something about the journeying, whether it was walking or being in the car and the lights and the shapes, just seemed to light a fire, you know, often. And, and then, you know, as, as Carl said, you know, the, the specific nature of the people and the dialect, you know, all these things obviously had a direct effect. And if we'd been somewhere else, wouldn't have been the same. You know, there's a, there's a work ethic, you know, in, in Essex that's different from places that I've spent time in. And they're, they're, they work hard and they play hard. That's been a bit sweeping, you know. But um, that's what it seemed like to me. And it, and it was a joy, you know. It was really interesting. It was like, well, you can have a laugh and not give a shit, say the wrong thing, be a bit politically incorrect. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> <laughs> We caught you by surprise. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, Rick, what, what, do, what do you see as your role in Underworld? Oh, God. I, I, this is really difficult for me now. I'm so buzzing so much from the show, you know, trying to... Uh, tell I me don't what know. You I mean, I'm here. Us. I'm here. I was here <laughs> doing things. You know, really specifically, whether it was the sound field or, uh, or onwards, for me it was prepare everything that I can because it's technology. I can't just pick this instrument up and do that or do that, but then that's it. So we did not rehearse. It was all about the pressure of the moment and the failing and the recovering, which I think we did admirably well, you know? I, 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 I do, I, you know, I'm, I'm, and the, and I'm the proud genre of that. time Allowed kind of well, it. welcomed it, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. It was about yeah. trance. It was about yeah, it was taking really time to arrive somewhere. Yeah, it was real trance, you know, not, not the kind of plastic title that it became. You know, trance in the sense of, you know, Steve Reich trance. 
And in that Taking sense, time. the number of, of tracks that we might do in a set could be very small. Yeah, you, four, four or five. Tracks yeah. could last half an hour. You know, it was that was why it was very difficult when we started to get offered offered TV slots. How, you know, how long are you going to play for? Yeah, I don't know. You know, when does the singing come in? I don't know. You know, when does when does anything come in? We don't know because uh, we don't do that. In terms of bands that were that were doing that, that they. they I don't think there was anybody that, that was doing that over here anyway. And it was a, we, were, we were kind of making it up as we went along, but as a reaction to and with things that were, that were happening at that time, it was, I suppose it was part of a zeitgeist, maybe without us knowing. Uh, it, it happened to be of its time and the audience was there and, and ready and primed so that when we went and played that show at, uh, at the the Brixton Academy after Dobno Bass had come out and I think it was a mega dog night and and, and I, I specifically remember watching these two factions come together like oil and water and they were they were mixing and looking at each other and there was the indie crowd and there was the dance crowd the dance crowd that we'd always played to at those mega dog events and then this other bunch that had come in and they were both looking like they were coming to claim their band and it was the same band and that was the, the, the first and last time I ever saw that, that kind of, because normally when you're playing to an audience, you're playing to one group of people. It's very rare that you play to one that's kind of got these islands of di different pockets in it. And that night was it. 